entrepreneurs faced a new reality. This is provoking an unprecedented downturn in the global economy. Today, we have the resource persons, and the resource persons will address the issues related to women entrepreneurship problems faced by, during the COVID-19 period and its remedial measures. First of all, I, I just want to go to our respected resource person, Manoj Kumar Das. I'll just introduce him. He is the managing director of Northeastern Regional Agricultural Marketing Corporation, head of Northeastern Development Finance and Corporation Limited, and former director of Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship. I request, sir, to address this issue. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Yeah, we are in a time which was, uh, which is very defining uh, for our people. And uh, I think there will be a new way of new normal. And uh, whatever life we thought uh, usual that is being disrupted now, we are all now staying in, inside. And even a very long lockdown have become very normal for us. When we first got the lockdown, then we didn't know what to do. And uh, personally for myself, I stocked so much of uh, provisions uh, for the lockdown period. Then uh, now slowly we, we realize that our the needs are very, very limited. And uh, we can live with so many things that or ways of life that we are uh, used to like uh, going to malls, shopping, uh, going to beauty parlor, going to restaurant, hotel, going out, driving out, going on long drives. So everything has uh, been disrupted, but then uh, that has become a new level than social distancing. Uh, uh, we are basically, uh, when a group of friends uh, get together, they used to huddle together, come closer. Now people go away. And uh, uh, in the time of, if somebody is uh, COVID positive, uh, even the relatives do not go to see him or her. And uh, all over the world now, economies are shrinking because uh, of the lockdown, factories are not running, and the uh, industries are shutting down. Some industries are going through real places like aviation industry, then Tourism, then hotel, restaurants, uh, then uh, maybe uh, these garments. Uh, so whole sort of new industries are now cropping up. Uh, but uh, man is always very very innovative, and we see a new some new lines of business are coming up. Like like now, uh, this uh, telephony, internet, uh, then uh, this uh, agriculture, food processing, then. Uh, e-commerce, all these sectors are growing. And uh, even in this pandemic situation, we see our uh, homegrown reliance, uh, Jio is selling stakes to Google, Facebook, at lakhs of crores or rupees. So we'll have to innovate. Uh, we know we are passing through bad times, hard times, and a uh, lot of jobs are lost, crores of jobs are lost. Uh, that is not even counted now how much uh, how many people lose job and uh, and uh, yeah the main sufferers in case of job loss is basically the family and when the family suffers the woman that has she has to manage and uh, she goes through all those uh, hardships she has to she is a basically homemaker home manager now in this kind of a situation uh, entrepreneurship uh, I'm happy to see in the panel Subra from Manipur. She is one of our entrepreneurs promoted by uh, NetFi. Also, she is one of our first promoters who has uh, started a processing industry based on organic uh, products, organic inputs uh, in uh, Manipur. And she is uh, having, uh, receiving very good uh, uh, response from all of her even uh, export markets. She, she was having orders from European countries. 
proceed uh, will definitely share her uh, experience how her journey in entrepreneurship now uh, if we come to women entrepreneurship in office i think uh, here women are much much more empowered we have a uh, uh, higher gender equity uh, favoring women than even in a state like meghalaya it is the women who inherit the property uh, the children inherit the title of the father and uh, all of our other states also they are very very active and uh, there is no discrimination uh, per se to other societies and uh, uh, barring a few instances i think uh, they are more than equal and uh, they are very very entrepreneurial and uh, if we look at uh, northeast because uh, in assam uh, particularly our 84% is agrarian so i think we will not be that much affected by this uh, pandemic but then we will be in fact able to leverage this uh, situation uh, going a little backward uh, through backward integration like uh, going for farming uh, farming means uh, this is uh, we can go for uh, uh, multi cropping now then composite farming uh, then uh, backyard poultry handloom handicraft uh also piggery goatery fishery we import uh, about huge quantities of fish from outside i uh, nobody has quantified but somebody mentioned a figure 15000 crore i don't know but is that figure is true that is a uh, fish we import from uh, as far as place like andhra pradesh or north india kanpur maybe punjab then x uh, i have a number there is about 6 million x are imported to assam guwahati delhi and it is distributed to other parts of the region then milk about 5000 crores worth of milk is imported packaged milk also in uh, containers it comes from uh, like uh, north bengal uh, bihar for processing here there are few dairy uh, processing units here like amul has a plant in uh, pani khaiti then we have purobi then there is another one i think north guwahati i forgot the name uh, so milk is uh, these are basic commodities those are important even potato you import what about 6000 crores uh, every year that is uh, we have uh, and i have a figure from one survey net fee conducted about 6 7 months back we did a survey on coal storage and that time this figure came out so our economy is basically uh, fed from outside and if you make a list of uh, items that we consume every day since morning till night you will find local companies very very less maybe buying some vegetables some uh, maybe rice local paddy and uh, same uh, like the roti kapra makan if you look at all these kapra you see most of the kapras come from outside then uh, food also items rice is from outside uh, our uh, uh, this wheat based uh, products are from outside then uh, the makan that we live in uh, i think uh, in our villages we have uh, local companies like bamboo thatch and other things but uh, in the urban setup setting uh, this still comes from outside uh, uh, cement uh, mostly from uh, like but now we have uh, some even it's locally but then i don't know how much uh, percentage of demand is made with local production uh, because of northeast industrial promotion policy then neids and other schemes uh, some industries have come up cement uh, steel and all that uh, but then uh, that's not sufficient there are many other items like tiles floor tiles and uh, other steel uh, accessories then uh, ply ply alia used to produce uh, 100% ply in makun tinsigia area but now it comes from outside so that's it and uh, i think uh, we have future in uh, handloom sector uh, assam has about 1.8 million handlooms 18 lakh looms are there that looms need to be upgraded to a uh, chakram or you know high production looms maybe semi mechanized or in some cases we can go for power looms and uh, they, that's uh, our women are national weavers then i think uh, backyard poultry composite farming then nationally grown uh, fruits and vegetables big markets all over the world now people are looking at uh, not organic 
when you go for organic certification then it is very costly it's about 10 times the cost of the vegetable that you get in a market there's a price you have to pay if it is certified organic and there is something in between that is uh, um, naturally grown vegetables and fruits and uh, recently i was in touch with some companies from japan and korea they were looking at assam to grow the these vegetables and fruits to be uh, imported to the country and uh, they were uh, businessmen or people having uh, dedicated chains like 10000 20000 uh, customers so who will be uh, supplied uh, this uh, and uh, that's a big uh, area huge area then medicinal aromatic plants we should look at agar and chandan we should plant we have wherever we have uh, spare land i think we should plant agar wood then uh, or chandan then uh, assam lemon uh, is a huge success now and it's grown in very large quantity uh, then uh, we of course have can have fishery national fisheries uh, New schemes have come up under even Bharat, uh, Atmanipa Bharat scheme. Uh, so if we meet the basic needs of the people and also needs of the people outside the, the region, I think we can uh, generate uh, sufficient livelihood by through entrepreneurship. But one thing I would like to tell here that wherever we have uh, local raw material, then that kind of industry is uh, successful. For example, we have this uh, bell metal industry, which is very, very old. I think, uh, I don't know, maybe 1,000 year old, 2,000 year old. But then, still, they, they are in the hands of Mahajans. The Mahajans give the raw material and they buy back the product. So, what are the artisan is the, a low wage, and he is neither allowed to die or uh, neither allowed to live uh, properly. But in the at the same time, if we go for like some clusters where local raw material like bamboo or our airy, uh, these are sustainable uh, raw material which can be uh, grown annually. So there are uh, I can cite quite a few examples. Like one example of that is in uh, there is a place called Raipur in Borpeta. Uh, that cluster produces uh, bamboo, handicraft, furniture, and all these, what, about 50 crores. Then we have a very, very big cluster of ghari making in Chhoigaon. They export about 30 uh, jagannath size uh, trucks to Hyderabad and Bangalore for uh, those. These ghari are used for, I mean, bamboo mats are used for making uh, ply, bamboo ply. Uh, then uh, there is a Besimari in uh, Dorong district near Kharupetia. They make baskets for vegetable packaging. Then we know our uh, eddy based loom sector that is uh, doing well. Uh, so, I mean, uh, not making great money, but then uh, one can only sustain. Then we can have, uh, I suggest, like uh, currently, I think Godri is uh, uh, mutton cost has gone up to the roof. There is about 800 rupees a kilo retail price. So, Godri is one. Then, uh, Pigari, even for Pigari, these box uh, pigs are supplied from Gujarat. Uh, and Punjab to Assam, uh, total demand is estimated to be about 1,000 crore. Out of that, 550 crores worth uh, pigs are supplied from outside. Then fish is about 10,000, uh, 15,000 eggs. We import about 10,000 crores worth of egg from outside. So this kind of demand-based, resource-based, uh, and a small scale uh, we can take up. And there are government schemes like Mudra scheme is there, then Startup India, then Stand Up India, Atmanivar Bharat, and uh, there are a host of uh, schemes. Even in that Netview, we have schemes for women, women entrepreneur development scheme that is up to 15 lakh, uh, given on easier terms, and uh, simple application process, not no need of project report and all. And uh, uh, yeah, but then uh, as uh, Mosumi initially narrated, a lot of startups have died. And startups have a very high mortality anyway. When in normal times, about 90% startups uh, do not survive. So we 
can have uh, some innovation uh, led and some resource that I uh, two three three four candidates you should look uh, like one is banana we produce huge quantities of banana and from banana we can have so many items banana chips banana paddy then even uh, we can make wine out of banana ripe banana then uh, banana alkali the, the car that uh, that can be actually put in uh, Normal mineral water made uh, pH eight. Uh, if you make pH eight water, alkali water, alkaline water, there is a huge demand. It's uh, good for health uh, and it cures a lot of ailments or prevents a lot of ailments, including cancer. Then uh, uh, that's uh, banana fiber. Uh, you can convert to textile. Banana fiber is a very good, uh, costly material. Then second one is jackfruit. Jackfruit is uh, now declared a superfood, and uh, all components of jackfruit is used. Uh, we can dry the ripe jackfruit, and uh, the raw jackfruit is called vegan meat. Uh, it is fibers like meat. Then the nut is uh, kathal guti, that is very very nutritious, and it is a high proteinous, high fiber material. We can make uh, something like powder and mix with atta and uh, reinforce our nourishment. Then uh, uh, also jackfruit wine, jackfruit ripe jackfruit uh, can be also dried in uh, solar dryer. Uh, then uh, third one is I'll put uh, uh, STG small tea growers. We have about one lakh twenty thousand small tea growers in Assam, but right now they are supplying about twenty six percent of the uh, green leaf to tea gardens. I mean organized. Corporate tea structure, and they normally uh, exploit them by giving a lower price. So they should go for a small uh, processing units and uh, produce more tea because uh, during Corona, now post Corona, there will be huge demand for organic tea because tea is supposed to prevent, uh, I mean, uh, increase or boost our immune system. But nobody is talking about coffee right now, so that's a good news for tea industry. Uh, then, of course, our uh, age-old uh, silk industry, uh, that uh, airy we should grow. Then we have been neglecting this mulberry or uh, silk, that is our Assam path or Nuni path. That we should actually try to now revive that sector. We should plant as many mulberry trees as possible. Uh, I don't see many mulberry plantations now, but we must go and visit. Uh, Karnataka then see how they are promoting. There is not a single vacant spot where uh, mulberry is not uh, planted. Then uh, Muga, of course, is a tree born uh, semi wild variety silk. So Muga has huge demand, but then uh, because of uh, you know tea industry, pesticide use, and all, the Muga is a very sensitive silkworm. So uh, we can move to some areas, uh, non traditional areas. Muga, Airy, Silk, that, that can be looked into. Then backyard poultry, fishery, as I said. Then another industry we have been neglecting is our uh, Assam's, uh, that Kuti based uh, uh, cattle industry. That We have about 6.5 lakh uh, um, Asiatic uh, swamp buffalo. And uh, their milk is very, very rich because uh, they feed on. Um, very rich uh, grass also like uh, local like uh, i don't know the names like elephant grass or khagori and all that so it's very very rich but then they their milk is not organized collected in an organized way and processed into different products now they only sell the milk i think in situ they should be given small small plants to convert it to maybe paneer mawa khoya or they should be taught how to make uh, sweets or whatever milk products. Maybe uh, giving chillers you can collect to one place and set up a very big uh, plant like Amul. Right now, Amul started as a corporate milk cooperative union, and um, yesterday I saw their turnover has crossed about 55,000 crores. So that kind of industries we have to bring in. And uh, another. Uh, hmm, and loom, I said, I think I have touched most of the areas. Then medicinal and aromatic plants. Medicinal and aromatic plants. Uh, there is a demand for like uh, 
citronella lemon grass oil then also many ashwagandha then arjun uh, then giloi giloi jar hogoni lota uh, so so many varieties of medicinal plants can be grown in a backyard collected uh, bundled together or aggregated then it can be sold to big big plants coming up here uh, like patanjali and dabur red plants in balipara uh, there are issues like payment issues and all so that we have to maybe federalize and uh, increase our uh, bargaining power uh, so that can be done and somebody has to come forward only uh, so there is scope in all these uh, so uh, yeah with this was i conclude my uh, lecture or my talk and they can ask me questions thank you mosumi Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think sir had given lots of uh, avenues through which we can start up our business. As for example, jackfruit, banana alkaline tea, silk, buffalo milk, etc. But now I think the students have uh, uh, participants have some kind of questions in their mind. Please go to the questions. Please ask the questions. The sir can answer. Someone can put their questions in chat box also. Microphone. Hello. 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 Good morning, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. There is a que question in a chat box actually. Okay. So I would like to read the question uh, uh, queried by the Sunanda Thakuria. Good morning, sir. In this regard to Northeast, what kind of societal impact will be seen in women entrepreneurship? Uh, am, yes, I, am I supposed yes, to answer sir. this? Yes. See, women, if we empower the women, she is the giver in the family. So if we empower the women, she takes care of the family. And a new a whole generation is empowered if a woman is empowered financially, educationally, or otherwise. As she brings in culture, she brings in independence, she can take care. And uh, a whole sort of uh, a dependent woman and independent women has a lot of mind, different in mindset. And... Uh, it really uh, helps in creating a generation, a new generation, uh, which are uh, independent, which have higher aspirational level. Basically, we uh, contribute to the aspirational level of the uh, in the family. Children they can spend more uh, uh, in uh, other like in, uh, not only the basic amenities but other things uh, they can. Uh, Spend on leisure, entertainment, travel, tourism, then uh, better standard of living. Basically, it will uh, contribute to better standard of living, uh, high standard of living, uh, quality of life, then uh, all sort of uh, empowering the family, basically, if we empower the women. And entrepreneurship, uh, another thing is uh, it will generate uh, employment, create wealth, and uh, so it's, it's a new entrepreneurial society, not dependent on the job seekers or uh, uh, 
and one is managing own time leveraging on time smartly investing that is his time and creating wealth getting a value for himself herself family society at large so it's like that i hope i answered it correctly so i have a uh, question for you i was listening to the various uh, we understand that the northeast which is otherwise considered as a anthropologist paradise you have this rich natural resources the problem is sir in the recent times what we have seen not only covid we have seen that the employment scenario has been it's failing it's not helping and the youth of this particular region the northeast is frustrated now is there any such plan where you have this entrepreneurship linked with academy because there was a kind of understanding that entrepreneurship is meant only for the marginalized people i think we need to unlearn and put it in a different way so what is what do you think should be the right motto right now uh see we are we are a society a transition um notice the uh, we look at the other hill districts after before 50 years and now there is a lot of change and we have leap frogging from maybe hunter gatherer to agriculture then uh, maybe service and then to now uh, creating a entrepreneurial or intellectual society so it's a, a big jump leap frogging and uh, in between the main culprit i will say is the education system uh, the education system is just uh, or is a uh, when you say okay how much you scored we say how much you have memorized and vomited out in the new paper how much you have written <laughs> Uh, is there any intellectual thinking component there is none uh, i'll tell you about uh, outside they have uh, um, they don't push everybody through the same system maybe after class 8 they look at the korean system they i i treat them as one of the best examples uh, india should emulate uh, in 1960 we our per capita income were almost at similar level about 60 dollar uh, but right now you see where korea is where we are they it's all due to their actually education system uh, they have introduced uh, uh, vocational schools from the uh, from class 6 onwards 6 then 8 then like that higher learning and it it is a parallelly learn uh, run system and in our case we had its after matric there also with very age old syllabus and uh, limited kind of courses i tell you uh, one year back i was in edi uh, ahmedabad and there were some chinese students and evening i saw the saw them you know cutting each other hair and uh, i asked okay these fellows will they know at least 10 skills they know how to stitch they know how to cook they know how to cut hair they know how to do plumbing uh, then electrical i mean whatever is required in, in the household uh, they know it so this skilling thing uh, we have neglected uh, to a very large extent and our youth are frustrated because they don't have a skill set and they are not employable they have a degree but then if you ask what what they can do for someone employer uh, they, they will not be even able to draft their uh, an education i mean even we talk about academic their language or uh, forget about the skills they cannot so uh, this we have now launched the skill india mission in 2008 and that is very badly run but then uh, uh, the targets were really uh, very very ambitious we are to train 500 million youths by 2022 now i don't know what is happening normally you don't have me reading of this kind of announcement so uh okay but currently we are again under transition from maybe academic to vocational 
the vocational uh, skilling is slowly getting acceptance now maybe after 10 years we'll see the result there from skilling they will go for small small thing now there is no culture we all want uh, blue color white color jobs office jobs uh, that too also maybe government jobs that too also with some banker hat where you can money you know doing indulging in corruption and uh, the society is like that so nobody is looking for a for example i tell you about this mohogwal our mohogwal or uh, if he has a 100 buffalo one buffalo costing say 70000 <laughs> his net worth is about 70 lakh rupees but fellow is not marketed properly anybody would like to give his daughter in marriage to a mohogwal but his net worth is 70 lakhs ever thought about it we will go for somebody who is doing some uh, contract something running uh, moving on a very big huge car and swing off so that fellow has more uh, esteem in the society rather than a person having who is uh, working uh, hard very uh, day and night and uh, doing this kind of work who is network maybe or some more so there is a mismatch in aspiration then what we are doing uh, where the society is leading all that way basically it's a society in tajaba do we have to uh, do lot of corrective measures so that uh, it is channelized for a better future better uh, orientation guidance to the youth so right now it's very difficult to say definitely everybody is frustrated because uh, they are not getting uh, jobs they want to but then i say there is a lot of change in our youth mindset now you will find they are very shy of doing certain things but they do outside like uh, there are a lot of rubber tapers from assam even from my area in dhamaji they work in uh, uh, kerala they make good money then send back home so this work is slowly growing and with i think covid situation now nobody is scared of nobody is shy of doing work yesterday i met one gentleman i can name is uh, actually uh, his name is dipankar sekia he was doing some stable business i think some running some uh, pg hostel and all this there is a close down now he is making you know uh, buying raw milk from outside making dahi and uh, selling in dipanan Vipran Chhatra, you know, Punjabari. So there he got two shelves. Every day he puts about 50 uh, half kilo packets of uh, but uh, cart doi, and every day he is uh, earning his livelihood that way. So yesterday I gave him some idea. Okay, go into Jamine Mungdal and make uh, butter gazaliola. One one packet, 15 grams. So 100 kilo maybe Mungdal you can convert to 1000 rupees. so that kind of you know so we need to have some need to have some idea labs where we can all contribute with some small small ideas we have and uh, there is lack of mentorship uh, in a very very big way outside like my i tell you about uh, france where my daughter studied uh, they are they are given one mentor is called pagom is godfather from the same college but which is about 20 year elder to her he is supposed to guide her through her career then they have alumni associations is not like us you know, where we meet and uh, for for facebook photo photoshop they uh, hold meetings every uh, every month and uh, the uh, students can go and talk to them meet them take guidance we don't have that kind of a system i think test pur university can take a lead in that like you form alumni chapters in all the cities which meet every month which can be even mentor platforms for not but other universities as well where we can also go like person like kanu or many other people who are in practicing in the field uh, we can go give a talk and guide them it really helps i was a director in iai so they are uh, it's not that they, they look for monetary help they look for ideas good ideas resources a good entrepreneur with a good i mean uh, sufficient uh, risk taking ability and the need achievement motivation will success in life succeed in life and it is also very important uh, that we fail two three times then come back it's not that you will uh, succeed and uh, one thing we have not uh, taught our children is uh, how to manage failures we are all at them telling first first ye we are always trying to boast about their success so there has given them a false sense of 
uh, achievement in their mind. And if they fail, times go bad. They don't know what to do. Like in times like this, they are uh, clueless. They are frustrated. They are, I mean, they don't know what to do. So we should prepare them for failures. And then they will bounce back like Steve Jobs, who failed five times, then created the most valuable company in the world, Apple. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. There are some questions I have seen in the chat box, but I think that our because time is uh, it is less, so we can start with the other resource person, and after that, uh, um, all of we will try. All the resource person will try to solve the uh, answer the questions of the uh, participants. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Dasar. Um, I uh, hope you will be there, or I think you have some kind of meeting so you have to leave. Uh, now we will be, uh, so thank you very much and give a precious time and giving us lots of valuable uh, information. So we'll be in touch and we will continue and we will take care of your advice. So now we will start uh, with our next uh, precious person. Uh, he is uh, Syamkanu Mohanta and renowned entrepreneur based in, uh, in Guwahati, involved in wide arenas of business and social activism. He is basically an engineer, uh, worked as in some development projects in NetFi and ILFS. He is the managing director of MMS uh, Advisory Private Limited, promoted it at Trust in the name of Trust MMS and initiated India's biggest sociocultural uh, initiatives as like Northeast Festivals, Rongali, New Delhi, Bangkok, Bangkok, and in many places through this trust. So now we often see him in some of the talk shows, very, very um, it's, uh, important with the Zugatma district uh, with some Kanu Mohanta. So uh, in Prague News. So I, I welcome you, sir. And I just like to uh, give the, keep your uh, space uh, in the forum. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mosumi. And thank you, everyone. And, and after listening to Monos Da, who is like a senior to me, like a family member, feel good. And most importantly, I would, I would love to address our women, our friends, our sisters. And at a time when I believe the future of Assam is entrepreneurship, and that's why I'm here. I had rounds of meeting today, but I thought I must come and see and meet our friends. Uh, I, in this short presentation, I'll be brief. I'll talk about uh, my entrepreneurial journey, what I have done so far, and then what I want our entrepreneurs to do, our what kind of projects are possible in the Northeast India post-COVID. So talking about myself, I did my, uh, I passed out uh, Cotton College, Engineering College, and then I did management in finance, MBA in finance. And then I joined in NetFi, Northeast and Development Finance Corporation. Uh, I was actually in charge of project finance and did a lot of small project financing, women entrepreneurs, a lot of finance, a lot of small projects by women, large projects. And at the time, I was working with Dr. Jayant Madhav and Mr. J.P. Soikia groomed me. So uh, at the time, I was involved in a lot of uh, Northeast industrial policies and other projects. Then I joined ILFS, Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services, and I became senior vice president there in ILFS, one of the top management. And I worked in Delhi. I was in Uttaranchal, Bihar. I was in Washington in U.S. So I, project, I, I was involved in some of the largest projects India has seen. That when you see Tripura power projects, is 6,000 crores of project. I was a project manager. I was involved in bringing some hotel chains like Taz Hotels in Guwahati, uh, Agartala, and many other places. I did logistic hub, agro projects. And I was um, working in different parts of the country at the time. And then I realized I always wanted to come back to Assam. I was mostly in Delhi. And I told my father that I want to leave my job. Uh, my family is all, all in, 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 in jobs. My brother, Bhaskar Jyoti Mohanta, is a director of the police of Assam. 
Uh, my brother, Dr. Nikupal Mohanto, is a professor in Guwahati University. One is in uh, principal of Sipsagar Commerce College. All of them we discussed, and they told me, go ahead. But my father was not happy that at the time when I was earning a good salary at a very senior level in ILFS, and one of the most highest uh, ranked person in the whole country. So at the peak of my career, I left my job because I always wanted to come back to my own place and do something. Whatever I have learned in across the world, I want to come back and do in my place. So there I started my journey. Although my family, my father was very against it, but my brothers told me, let's take a jump, let's take a plunge and see how it, how it is. And I must tell you, 2011, I started my entrepreneurial journey. And now uh, around 300 people are working with me, around 300 engineers. Uh, by God's grace, we, learned a lot, we run the largest project management company of Northeast is MMS Advisory. Whatever I have learned in NetFee and ILFS, I started in my personal life the same thing. I did this embankment, Mark Mora Geotube, that is in Dhokwa Khala. We did project management. We are not a contractor. We are a project management consultant. I learned how to conceptualize a project, how to bring finance, how to, and how to do project supervision. Whatever I have learned, I started my company. The first lesson of entrepreneurship I want to share with my friends so sitting here is that you must start a project where you have some expertise. In my case, my expertise was project management, how to conceptualize a project. And I did projects across the world. And whatever I have learned, I started doing in Northeast. So first project was the Matmona Geodikes, which successfully implemented. And for the last many years, there is no flood. We did many projects, Bembo Technology Park, Mega Food Park. And we started doing project supervision of road project of Prime Minister Grandma Sarah Josina of entire Northeast. So these are the projects I have started doing in. So mainly, I earned my living from project consultancy. So we do the DPR, we do the design, drawing, and project supervision. We get fees. And from these fees, I run my organization. And most of the boys are engineers working with me. So this is one part of my job. There's entrepreneurship, which is basically whatever I have learned, I started doing it. Then I started some many other initiatives. I had done a small hydrobar project of 8 megawatts. It's called Patka Energy. This is in a place called Rima in, in Arunachal Pradesh. Because my expertise is hydropower project. I did a lot of small hydropower projects. There's a Champamati hydro project we did in, uh, in a place called um, Siran in, 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 in Kokorazania, Kokorazar. So that project is successfully running. So I started doing my own small hydropower project. So basic point, my expertise, whatever I have learned, I started doing it. But later on, I get into the socio-cultural initiative because we come from a very a cultured family background. My whole family is from culture. So we thought we started doing some cultural initiative. We started an initiative called Train MMS. It's a trust. Under Train MMS, I did this Sankar Deva Movement Initiative in Delhi, Bangalore, and Mumbai. It was an experimental initiative. There we started the Northeast Festival because I was in Delhi, and at the time there was a lot of racial attack was going against the people of Northeast. To create awareness about Northeast, we started Northeast Festival. It was just an attempt to just make people know about Northeast. So we tried to showcase our culture. Zubinga came on board, Mericom came on board. And all these Adil Hussein, the icons of Northeast, we joined hand and we started this Northeast Festival. Over the years, I'm so happy to tell you the Northeast Festival has become the biggest brand of Northeast outside. If you type Northeast, you would cover Northeast Festival. I started this initiative just in an experimental venture. But later on, what we did, we include uh, entrepreneurship. We realized what is the strength of Northeast. Our strength is handloom and handicraft. We started showcasing our entrepreneurs, mostly women entrepreneurs. So highlighted the, the craft of Northeast, the tourism, I realized that strength of Northeast. While doing Northeast Festival, I have realized the power of Northeast tourism. So in Delhi, when people started coming in Northeast, they, they started talking about tourism. So we started promoting in Northeast Festival. It is organized in a place called Indira Gandhi Center for Arts in Delhi, IZNC. We started highlighting the tourism destination of Northeast, of the Mazuli. For example, our, our ma, ma, the Mana Sanctuary, the Arunachal, that, you know, lakes of Arunachal, all of the products we started exhibiting. Then we started organizing some B2B meet on tourism. We got the tour report of Northeast connecting with the tour report of Delhi. It has resulted in lots of business in Northeast. And the Handloom Handicraft Entrepreneurs, we started doing some B2B meet on textiles. So it has given, if you see, a lot of textile entrepreneurs of Northeast got their, you know, they started doing their first initiation in Northeast Festival Delhi. Then we started promoting our cuisines. We made some beautiful Northeast cuisines are very, very saleable. And the, the famous Northeast restaurants like Nagaland Kitchen, Joko the Tribal Kitchen, all started from Northeast Festival. Because cuisine, craft, tourism, music, fashion, that made our combination. So what I'm trying to talk about, the strength of Northeast, these are the strength of Northeast. And in Northeast Festival, musically, because we have strength, so Papon, Zubin, we all got to it together. 
So all the top iconic Tetsu sister, the Soul Mad, and Ruben Masang, all he came. So music became a product for us. We started promoting music. We started promoting fashion. The most of the fashion designers that you have seen from the Reboti Chetris and Aradhana Borgwaj and Sanzuka, that everybody has become a product of Northeast Festival. So fashion, they got business linkage. So Northeast Festival has become a, a business platform. From Delhi, we went to Mumbai. We did this Colors of Northeast in Taj Mahal Palace. It was hosted by Ratan Tata. Then all the top industrialists came. Then I started organizing a, the Making Northeast campaign in Mumbai, where we got a lot of investors talking about exploring investment in Northeast India. Then we went to Bangkok after the success of Northeast Festival. We realized the future of Northeast is Southeast Asia. So we organized this Northeast India Festival at Bangkok in a place called Central World. Around 700 entrepreneurs, uh, textile entrepreneurs, agri and food entrepreneurs, tourism entrepreneurs went to Bangkok. We got Southeast Asia's top entrepreneurs coming. We organized B2B meet on tourism, B2B meet on agriculture sector. There I realized the market of agri hoti products of Northeast India. So Northeast Festival Bangkok has created a large base and we did a lot of people to people exchange with Thai home culture of Northeast, the Thai scholars of Northeast discussed with the, the Thai scholars of Southeast Asia. So basically there I realized the future of Northeast lies in Southeast Asia and so this people to people exchange is so critical to organize business linkage in future. The Northeast India festival become quite famous and India's prime minister in 2000 last year has declared that this is a continuous affair. So this year we are supposed to do in this month of uh, February, but because of Corona we deferred. Then we also did something called Rongali in Assam, where you must all know the famous Rongali festival which we organized. It is in Guwahati, in Kalnapara, where you get two reporters across Northeast come, across India come. They go to Nagaland, they go to Meghalaya, they go to entire Assam. And we try to develop a tourism link here, and that has resulted a lot of tourism inflow. And Southeast Asia also, we started getting some business and tourism link here. So this is basically the basic job that I'm working. I'm working many other projects, but to give a background at the, what the, the making of me as a person. And this TV program is Jugatmok Distira Shyam Kanura Khoite. So I started talking about entrepreneurship. I started talking about power plans. I say that and andulans are not in future. The future is work, future is entrepreneurship, future is business transaction and opening up ourselves. So TV, I started talking this subject and luckily there are a lot of young people started liking it and I'm doing some special programs in TV and we talk about a development agenda. So today is a part of the entire thought process. Let me tell a few things specifically about women entrepreneurship. I, I talked about myself because, uh, because uh, I come from a very a small village of uh, Sipsagar, Kuwarpur. From Kuwarpur, I studied in Sipsagar government school in Assamese medium. I then studied in Cotton College and I traveled across the world. And I must tell you, some of the biggest projects of India, I'm lucky to drive it. When the Sipsipura power project is India's most successful power project, and I was the project manager. What I'm trying to tell you that from any corners of Assam and Northeast, we can come out provided we have the drive and passion to do it. So, first thing, for an entrepreneur is passion. The passion is most important thing that you must be a passion. As I told you, Northeast Festival usual was an experimental initiative. I just started, but now it has become not a passion of myself, the passion of our lakhs of lakhs of people. So there are a lot of project initiatives that we have started. The passion is driving it. So first thing for any entrepreneur, for us means or Northeast and boys and girls, the passion is important. You must love your what you are trying to do. Most important thing, love you want to do what you do, and you must have the guts to pull it through. There are many failures. I also have, uh, I have so encountered many failures in life. But yes, failures give you an opportunity. You know, every, every failure is an opportunity. Look at how best, how well you can take it forward. So talking about entrepreneurship, the Northeast India, I'll come specific to the specific projects because I, Manuzda has already spoken about, in general, a lot of initiatives, a lot of possibility of entrepreneurs. But I'll talk about specificity about projects. If you look at me, if I, if, I, if I want to advise you what kind of project you can look at, I see a maximum potential of Northeast uh, that is um, tourism. The core competency, what is a, I always believe every, every person has a core competency. I have my strength, I have my weakness. As a person, uh, perhaps my strength is I can communicate, I can work hard, and you know, there are a lot of positivity I bring. But I have some weakness in terms of accounting and other things where I bring some expertise from outside. So as a person, you have a strength and weaknesses. And as an organization or as a, as a region, you have a strength and weakness. If you look at the SWOT analysis of Northeast, our biggest strength is what we have. What we have is tourism because as a product, Northeast is uh, perhaps uh, Assam is the largest concentration of wildlife sanctuaries in the whole world. 
If you look at Orunachal, the Stone Peak Mountains, we look at Meghalaya, an entire culture, the, 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 the numerous tribes, and especially the food habits together, Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, if you all combine together, Northeast as a whole, it's the most attractive tourism destination in the whole country. But what is our problem? The perception is bad, which we are trying to do, trying to, with, we are trying to do, as I just forgot to mention, in Northeast Festival, we started getting first page news in Times of India Hindu about our food, our fashion, our craft. The Northeast Festival, we try to create a perception, try to address the perception issue. Because tourism is on perception, the investment is on perception. The tourism, first thing is that what we are trying to do is create a positive perception. Earlier, it was all about flood or, or insurgency or, you know, uh, all these issues with the positive, uh, negative publicity across the country. In Northeast Festival, we have got positive headlines across India on this, the positivity of Northeast. So tourism, off late, is has to becoming quite attractive in Northeast. Before the CA movement, tourism was booming in Assam and Meghalaya specifically. A lot of new entrepreneurs came in, a lot of tour operators came in. But after CAA and after this corona, we are in serious problem. If you ask me, as of now, Tourism in Northeast is an absolute in ICU. But you as a young entrepreneur, you're all studying in Tespin University. And as a young entrepreneur, you will come out of your study in the next one or two years and you'll be ready to the world after two years. After two years, Northeast tourism will be booming, that I can promise you. So first thing, in an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, you must not look at today, you must look at tomorrow. When you, when you plan the project, because the project development stage, you need to plan the project. So when you plan out and talk about the project, I believe tourism is going to be a project you can look at. Why tourism? I have mentioned. We have strength as of Northeast. And post-COVID, you will see a lot of people will try to visit Northeast because, because people are you know, they're sick of these you know, artificialities, the buildings and the, the city life, especially Bangalore. Indian tourists are a big tourist. We don't need to look at foreign tourists. The people from Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Mumbai, they used to travel to US and UK specifically. Every, every year, around four or five times, they travel to across the world. That is where the maximum tourism for Indian tourists bring a lot of revenue to US and UK. But post-COVID, there's an apprehension that people will not travel that much outside the country. So I believe there's a potential of Indian tourists traveling to Northeast because they believe Northeast will give them solace, Northeast will give them wild land. So what do we lack here? We lack like wayside amenity center. The first project, if I ask to advise you, set up some wayside amenity center. If you drive your car from Guwahati to say, Sipsagor or Dibrugar, there are very few locations where you will get amenities, where you can, you can take your family, your wife, or your, or your mother uh, to use you know, for convenience. So first thing is that if you go to Delhi, Jaipur, you'll see a lot of convenience stores. The convenience stores are very attractive tourism proposition. The convenience stores need a very good toilet, good uh, clean hygiene atmosphere some good food and some um, and souvenirs and some um, agri products so first thing is that convenience stores i see a big demand these are called wayside amenities be it in assam be it in Arunachal. if you go to tawang you will be sick of going to tawang because there's hardly any facilities on the way to tawang on to tour to Arunachal, on to Lakhimpur. So first project I want to suggest to you, tourism, wayside amenities, look at this. I see a big demand in the next two to five years. The Northeast is going to do wonderfully well in tourism. The second project I'll try to address, because I'm trying to focus on specific projects for you so that you can, you can get into your mind. The second project I'll talk about, a project like Eco Resorts. So far, the, our, our concept of Northeast tourism is about, about mass tourism, where a lot of Bengalis come, and they come to Kamaika and they go to Shillong and crowd our place and spend very little. Tourism is all about Shillong or Kamaika or, or, or Kaziranga. So they're crowding the place, they're not bringing value because they do not spend. If I get a chance to manage this state, I'll first thing I'll, I'll do is that I'll make Assam a high end destination. An Orunachal, a Meghalaya, all this location, the high end destination means you have wildlife, you have culture. And you make eco resorts inside the resort, small resort, 10 room, 15 roof resort. But inside the resort, make it a very high quality toilet, very high, very clean, very hygiene. Because post corona, people not start, like to stay in a crowded hotel. This post corona, whole way the business will change. So I'm talking to you at a time when there's a future for you. Women entrepreneurs can make a killing post corona. If you ask me why, my answer is that hygiene is going to be the most critical factor of entrepreneurship, of lifestyle, of everyone. And women are much better in this sector. 
women are more hygienic they know what is because in our culture especially north eastern women nasmi's women now we have seen our mother how clean they have our parents and our mothers are trying to you know, teach people about hygiene our guru shankar dev has taught about our hygiene if you look at if you go to namgor when they distribute prasad they put a, a you know gamusa you know in, in, in nose so this is hygiene and we have a culture of hygiene and our women entrepreneurs can take forward the culture of hygiene in a tourism entrepreneurship make some eco resort small sun resort doesn't need too much of money 10 room resort make good restaurant and good, uh, good room good toilet and give them a hygienic service and market it extensively most importantly you do in resort near dekuya juli near resort near dibrugar now is online you see earlier people how i don't want to use my cash right now because you don't know from where corona is spreading so first thing you will see post corona you will see all internet driven business so that is where women entrepreneurs will have strength what you will do all everything is online you will book online you will and when you come to your restaurant your hotel your eco resort you will you will not give him menu you will give menu in his mobile menu in his mobile and everything in mobile everything the app will be created and through app people will order people will do business and people will make payment through your paytm or whatever app so there is no money transaction the online transaction will help not is because first thing you must learn you must have internet connection a broadband connection in your resort so broadband connections are offered by reliance jio so first thing tourism project with lot of internet connection and marketing across the world make a beautiful brand name and promote across the country across the world and talk about hygiene and talk about so may talk about you know eco resort in covid times and promote this concept and i see a big business opportunity up for our women entrepreneurs this is the first project the second project if i talk about the handicraft handicraft our women are strong in handicraft i am surprised to see what i saw in notice festival in notice festival what we do we got some agro our handloom handicraft entrepreneurs from the notice and hundred of them goes to notice festival and you call some buyers and buyers come and say that we can we can can you give this around 40 lakhs of order i am seeing in my eyes we are getting in notice festival booking up to 40 lakhs of rupees for our handloom product we are not being able to deliver because we do not produce mass production of handloom products there is a big demand across the national capital in mumbai our handloom products need some value addition and make it more fashionable our 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 is a fashionable means of value addition in your in a suridar or or in a skirt of our ad or a muga product is a huge demand and i tell you get into handloom product because we have strength in handloom product as well as handicraft market it online and if some of you are interested i will help you out i'll give you platform as i told you delhi notice festival we give entrepreneurs platform for free we do not charge anyone but we get the india large buyers coming and we organize btb meet If you do good quality product, I promise you, I'm going to help you. The entrepreneurs coming out of Tejpur University. This is a commitment from my side that I'll help you to get some market in them whenever you do. But you must show your product and convince me that you are doing some value addition. First thing, first thing is value addition. Yeah, our area, our Megu, our Muga, focus on value addition. Make product which are saleable in the market. Our Mekhala sadars are not that bulk product. Our skirts are bulk. Our suiders are, you know, yeah. Our mufflers, our masks, masks. As I told you, if you see my uh, Facebook status, I I promoted a mask of one guy called Bidud Bok guy, Bidud Bok Bhagoti, and he's getting orders to five thousand orders he got in two days from Delhi because my link links in Delhi, they are looking for this quality mask because designer mask made of Aryan Moga products are big demand because right now if you look at the companies, the big uh, corporates, top officials. they would like to you use and they want some exclusivity you know dress is exclusive they want the exclusive car and they will want an exclusive mask where you know two layers they want for safety but use muga use airy and make it stylish sell it in mumbai sell it in bangalore and you see a huge demand for our masks it doesn't cost more than 50 rupees you will you can sell it 600 rupees per mask that is business value addition is then how to market in create value there is a shop called ogan in delhi they to they to car they take our muga product which is and you are selling in muga sari we sell it at 2000 rupees they sell it 50000 rupees so that is where you know the value addition is creating the market so second product i focus on handloom and handicraft the third thing i would like to focus these are for my women entrepreneurs i am trying to focus on specific for the third thing i'll strongly talk about agro this is a feature of agro and horti and we can be an agro hub because we have got organic agro horti product Personally, I am starting an agro processing, you know, supply chain company. 
and I'm creating my own brand and trying to sell product to Southeast Asia and other parts of the world, our, our pineapple, our ginger. So if you talk about agro processing, the pineapple pulp, the pineapple is around six, seven days of life. You know, after seven days, it gets wasted. But if you make a pulp or powder, it stays for six months. So basically, not his biggest disadvantage is your linkage to outside world. But if you do some semi-process, it has got a bigger market. So Southeast Asia is opening up. As I told you, I've been to Bangkok, organized this Northeast Asia. Oh. Uh, somebody is huh? coming. Huh. Some Saya. Oh. OK. So, uh, so what I'm trying to tell you, earlier when you do business, when you start a project, there was a problem. Northeast product was only a small market of Northeast. Northeast is a small market. By the time we sell to Delhi or Mumbai, it becomes unviable because of transportation costs. But once the Southeast Asia car opens up, the road coming up, we must be all aware, there's a trilateral highway that connects from Manipur. There's Moray in Manipur. You go to Guwahati, Kohima, uh, Imphal, then Moray. From Moray to a Mashat in Thailand, it's 1,365 kilometer road. The road connects Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and goes to Mashat. And two hours from Mashat is Bangkok. And the road goes up to Singapore. This road is going to change the entire the logistic and connectivity dynamics of Northeast India. It's two very, very important projects I want to tell you. Because earlier, our problem is that our products are only in Northeast. But now, you can talk about selling to Myanmar. Myanmar is a market. And Myanmar is a poor country. And they need a lot of product. Trading can be a good business. Some products, you can, a lot of products will come from Southeast also, but we can sell product to Southeast Asia. The second good, important, the most important development I must tell you, now the Chittagong port is allowed for Northeastern people. Earlier, Chittagong was a part of Northeast at the time of 1947, when British left. Assam was the fifth largest economy of India. Assam is undivided Assam, Nagaland or Nachal altogether. Why? Because Chittagong port was part of Northeast. Sitogon in Assam has an um, you know, seamless connectivity to Myanmar. And there was Hindu, uh, Assam, Bengal, Assam, China. There was a pipeline, Assam, Burma, China, ABC pipeline. That pipeline used to fill uh, the ships of China from, from, from Assam. You know, Assam gas used to go to China. So basically, that was connectivity at that time. Seamless connectivity made Assam one of the most prosperous zones, undivided Assam. Now, because after independence, we lost the connectivity, we lost the market. But because of the Southeast Asia Act is policy, this market is opening up. First thing, Chittagong port coming up. So from people, you can, I did the first project of this Act is policy. I was in Tripura. At the time, we was doing Wenjishi Tripura power project. There, I realized the problem of Northeast. We used to make 726 megawatt power plant, Wenjishi Tripura power plant. So it was done by LFS, and I was the project manager. We used to bring this, we had to bring these turbines from, Siemens turbine from Germany. From Germany, it came to Kolkata port. And from Kolkata, we tried to bring to Guwahati, Barniha, then we tried to take to, to Karim Guns, then up to Tripura. Twice we failed because there is no road which can hold these big turbines. Then we went to Bangladesh. We convinced the Bangladesh Prime Minister, Khaleda Jia was a Prime Minister, was anti-India. So they convinced them and we used the Kolkata to uh, the Chittagong port. They allowed to in return of some power. So from Kolkata for to Chittagong is very easy, very near from Kolkata to Chittagong port. From Chittagong to Tripura is around 200 kilometers, that, that famous Palatana power project. So instead of running around Assam and Bengal and Meghalaya, which is a very shorter route, we save many days and we could transport because of river connectivity is easy. So very important, Bangladesh is very important to Northeast. And what good thing is happening for you all? Now the Sitogong, at that time we did it as a one-off project because of the, in, in lieu of power we did the project. Now Sitogong port is open up. From Silsar, you can sell products. Silsar can be a big zone. I see a big feature for Silsar because Silsar can send product because Tripura has some disadvantage. But Silsar can be a production hub and sell product through Sitogong. You can sell to China, sorry, you can sell to Germany, you can sell to US because the port is very important to selling products. So what I'm trying to tell you, you're in an exciting time because one side it is so, the port is opening up, opening up for Northeast and the Southeast Asia is opening up for Northeast. So market is bigger when you come an entrepreneur. So coming up the final project, so we talk about tourism, we talk about agri-processing, handloom, handicraft, but small, small project we talk about is a big demand for rice meal. It's around 90 lakhs of project, then 50% rice come from outside. If you do a rice meal, it's a big demand in Assam right now. If you talk about engineering project, they have paper block. These are some of the projects I'm mentioning so that you get some ideas. So these are the projects. There are many other projects, but give an idea about these two kind of projects I try to highlight where we have got raw material advantage, 
or like agro food processing or you have got core competency because of nature that is like tourism or market driven suppose rice meal market driven a lot of local market uh, missing and if you talk about ag uh, animal husbandry there is a huge demand for the pork processing pork is a big market and pork processing can be a big market not only for assam and northeast for the entire southeast asia so coming back to the incentives if you start a project i am just coming up the final part of my presentation uh, to do a project what do you need you need a project idea the project idea must you must have a project you must project which you have conviction in you need a land for it you need a detailed project report and you need funding for funding as manoj ji also touched upon net fee state bank of india other funding source so the women entrepreneurs net fee has a special scheme and there are a lot of incentive for women entrepreneurs if you can go through there are specific women entrepreneurs scheme for a project of 100 rupees you can spend around 20 rupees if you have to bring around 80 to 70, 75 rupees can be a bank loan for the bank loan there are incentive for msme first thing get yourself registered in msme there are incentive like no no collateral funding of late so collateral security you have to give a security in lieu of your loan so there are subsidies if you talk about i just want to highlight three things for you there's a government of india subsidy out of which 30% value of plant and machinery is given as reimbursement it's called central capital investment subsidy then there's a interest incentive subsidy for the five years of your production 3% of working capital interest is reimbursed by government of india and there's a comprehensive insurance subsidy where your entire insurance cost is reimbursed the gst reimbursement under government of india where government of india part cgst part of the gst is reimbursed income tax reimbursement to the tune of 58% that is a government part of central share of income tax is reimbursed and the new central north east india cell policy and there is a incentive for central employment incentives in case of assam we have another scheme where gs state government's st uh, cell tax is reimbursed up to 150% of value of plant and machinery and there is a 50% generating if you generate generate power subsidy up to 20 lakhs of rupees or 2 rupees per unit and and there are few other more subsidies so basically what i am trying to tell you there are subsidies there are projects there are in, now new policy say that your land you can convert into an industrial project provided you own the land so this is a good time to talk about project there is a lot of incentive for women and try to highlight few projects you can look at i try to talk about projects where in assam has a strength notice is a strength in terms of raw material or a market strength and most importantly our problem is that our mindset somehow assamese entrepreneurs women boys we do not have the drive the killer instinct of an entrepreneur first thing the whole country if you look at gujarat is driving by entrepreneur maharashtra is driven by entrepreneurs tamil nadu is driven by entrepreneurs women are driving it industry in the world now women are now in food processing industry handloom handling industry uh, women are different they are more aspirational they are especially a northeastern women our parents and we all are trying to you know groom our in fact i have a kid and we are uh, girls and we are trying to promote them i am trying to they are very young but i talk about entrepreneurship all the time so new generation talk about entrepreneurship and women are encouraging entrepreneurship and this is the best time covid is a bad time but covid is a matter of time next april covid will be gone that is where your time will come so get ready for this wonderful world what i am trying to tell you that covid is a real bad time so let us use this time to think about what you can do what research do lot of market research everything is available on online i don't need to tell you what are available for women entrepreneurs get into internet google it find out i just talk about notice in the self policy so you get an idea central subsidies are more viable because government pays it state you know state are doesn't are not resourceful that's why i'm not focusing on state what i'm trying to tell you is that everything available on internet business is on internet earlier i was studying i from a kuarpur i was born in a place called kuarpur in sibsagar very remote place in sibsagar at that time when i came to cotton college and i was much more unsmart than a boy from don bosco because i didn't have access to information but now if you look at the remotest corner of of assam or in nagaland has the same if he has a internet connection with jio is as smart as a guy in mumbai so internet has reduced this 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 you know uh, the barrier barrier of knowledge so what i'm trying to tell you use internet properly internet will give you business but your mind is important you must know you must you must know what is what i am trying to emphasize on being smart what is strength how can market and how to do it and most important drive to take it forward so thank you so much so i believe in the coming days we will see a lot of young women entrepreneurs from tespur university coming up and taking up project 
and skmohantajmail.com is my email address. You can follow me. I have a Shyamkanu Mohanto. I have many Facebook accounts as Shyamkanu Mohanto. There is a Shyamkanu Mohanto Facebook account and a Twitter account. So basically, uh, when you talk about, when you take up your plans, anytime, any help, I'm there. And uh, we are trying to create the, uh, the atmosphere so that if anybody creates problem, we'll fight for all of you. We want you to come out and let Assam and Northeast flourish as an entrepreneurial state, as a region. And we make our future, not through Andulon and Rastaka Andulon, Bonda Bonda. We want to open it up. We want to create a culture of, of industry, of entrepreneurship, an entrepreneurial culture, positive culture, positive mindset. And we are going to rule the world through our effort and a very positive medicine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you uh, for your valuable input, especially the uh, areas what you have uh, given to us. And I think in the chat box also lots of participants have given you the thanks. But there are some questions. Uh, first of all, I will go to because I have seen uh, for many uh, times because uh, for uh, some of the questions are there in the chat box. Uh, especially, I will speak about Sahina Khanam. He has a question that uh, women, especially from remote areas, are neglected. If they were going to start a business or entrepreneurship for those areas, will these women get successes of, uh, in any business? Uh, I just want to answer, first of all, uh, this question. I think I tried to answer this question when I was talking about it. Earlier, I told you at the time, uh, in remote people, a uh, person from remote area had a problem. I come from a remote place of Kuwarpo in Sipsagar. Uh, it's in, far away from town. Uh, so as I told you uh, earlier, but now in Kuwarpo, I see very strong internet connection. Your future is your internet. Information you will get in internet. If you're in a remote place, if you have a good internet connection, you will get access to all the information. The first thing is information in terms of what are the potential projects. I try to highlight you what are possible. The second part is how to go ahead. So in remote area also, the information from internet, you will get internet information in terms of project, detailed project report, how to make a detailed project report. And then somebody has to guide you. There must be a consultant who will help you in a local area. Suppose you're in Bibrugar, in the nearby areas, there'll be some consultant who can help you to make a project report. First, make a project report, look at the market, Look at the competitors, look at your product, and then go to the government, go to DIC. You go to DIC. If you're Dibrugar, come to DIC, Dibrugar. If you're in Sipsagar, come to DIC, Sipsagar, whatever. If in Manipur, Imphal, come to nearby area. So, so basically, first get the information, make a project, a viable project. You do a research on what, what are the viable projects. And I try to give some ideas what can be possible in our part of the country. Make a viable project, first thing. And then get into the government, nearby government level to get. These days, the approval levels are very less. As I am trying to tell you, earlier our time, we should take a lot of approvals. Now the approvals are much lesser. You'll get approval easily. And if you have any problems in getting approvals, mail me. I'll make a noise for you. There is no problem of getting approval. Whether in remote place or city center, doesn't matter. You need a good project, a viable project, research project, well-researched project. And you'll get support. Support, you need supported what? You need supported finance. Rest you have to deal yourself. You have to conceptualize project, you have to market, you have to develop knowledge, is everything of your own. So basically what I'm trying to tell you, internet is your answer. Internet will give you a lot of information. Where to apply, what to apply, what are the information. And if you have internet connection, you're at par, if you're in Delhi or in Guwahati city or inside in Kokraza, you will get the same information. So don't worry, use the internet properly and be smart in identifying a process. Getting approval, everybody will support you. Nobody is going to stop you right now, especially in Assam. I can say, I can save authority. I can save authority that nobody will disturb you in getting approvals. But project, you have to decide. Market, you have to develop. So you, this is all yours. Government can only support by giving some approvals. Rest is all yours. So you can do it. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, another question uh, from again, Suranda Thakaria. Because it is because you have told about internet, but she say that uh, since business is running online during this pandemic, don't you think women don't have same network access to reach out for moral and technical support? 
because uh, we i just want to add something because uh, some most of the some of the uh, girls uh, leave the education educated girls some poorly educated or uh, who don't doesn't have don't, doesn't have the education they don't uh, know to access the internet or sometimes they are very much poor in accessing this kind of surfing in internet or using the internet te uh, techniques so what about what for these such types of students no this is not fair there is no problem i my girls are doing wonderful let me answer the question now most of you leave it to me i'll search and i will answer because i understand that minds trust me i i work with all the young boys and girls all my uh, north east festival if you see all the most happening boys and girls are working with me from entire north east so i know their minds so first let me answer you nothing women cannot do most of the consultancy company i am working are driven by women so most of the it girls are women women are driving the world get your internet be smart start working there is no problem uh, a male and a female has the same problems and disadvantages in this covid time i also cannot go out and lady can also go out so it's all through internet sitting here inside the house i can do any work so first thing i want to tell you forget about the stigma male and female are equal especially in covid time and in a, in in a open time perhaps you might you are trying to mean that they will go out any time no right now you are at equal footing use the internet send mail send documentation everything is fair no problem at all okay let me answer the question i'm searching for one aditya saike is saying handloom and agro business depend on transportation and logistic which is constraint how to create efficiency in low cost in supply chain how to remove middlemen so that reaches directly to retailer i'm trying to do in agri hoti this uh, basically i'm working with the firm fpcs there is a farmers producing company fpcs are in assam if you look at we have an fpc in zagir road or in any other you have one gulaghat bukahat so i am connecting directly to the pharma producing company taking the product and trying to take it directly to the market market means earlier everything was managed by middlemen now post covid because of uh, people are not using because i am transferring money from here to a, uh, a revo in meghalaya through on in internet so once you transfer to internet the middleman is gone so what i believe post covid the advantage is middleman role is lesser because i i need to pay 10 lakhs of rupees to buy products i not use cash i will try to transfer to mail to online so what i am trying to tell you post covid it is much easier to control the middleman so a handloom and handicraft product make a good website suppose sikha spita is doing a handloom product so sikha will make a brand the brand you make it attractive showcase your product and do some facebook promotion instagram promotion in mumbai delhi wherever and then if somebody in mumbai in nariman point wants to buy a product from sikha she will like it and sell it and you sell directly because this online business is through online transaction and transport directly what i am trying to tell you the supply chain post covid will be through internet and you have to make a beautiful site good brand name and very attractive brand name and extensive promotion in social media it doesn't cost money if you want to promote in mumbai it will cost you 5000 rupees you can reach entire mumbai in social media there is a power of social media afrina begum says a thank you and great session it was fruitful yes. thank you so much so many positive word uh, i am getting uh, gitis meter okay uh, what more i am searching myself uh, mosimi let me see lina gogo you mentioned a lots of way which one can start entrepreneurship career but women take the dependent thing will depend the face problem encouragement all spheres might help yes i agree so uh, that lina i agree that women must be encouraged and that is why i am here that is i am here and this is my job and i believe uh, this is a job of others also and uh, we can do it we can do it and and irrespective whether encourage you or not i tell you as a country our prime minister wants to encourage women our government wants to encourage women and tespo university this fantastic women platform tespo university created that's fantastic i really loved it sandra prabha soikhani so these are people are doing it now i am sure things will improve in deep duty says is very inspirational there so many messages thank you so much uh, uh, i have to leave you guys uh, i just want to finish it off saying that uh, last time short term and Uh, one question by Puspita Dev, sir. I want to know short-term and long-term challenges that women entrepreneurs are going to face during post-era. Short-term challenge is logistic. Second, long-term challenge. There's a stigma always says that women cannot do, but uh, slowly things are changing. Short-term challenges are we are facing the challenges. Suppose I have to transport product to Dubai. I'm not being able to send because there is no flight. So, in terms of COVID, next few months will be challenging. Up to April, there'll be big challenging times. So, let us accept. up to april we have very serious challenges up to april 
but post april i see things will open up so till that time hold it plan make your planning right now and make your execution after april that is my suggestion so thank you so much so i have to leave you guys uh, my email is skmohanto@gmail.com and uh, you can see my shamkadam mohanto facebook page you can watch and i uh, keep on discussing on lot of this issue i answer lot of your queries and let's be in touch and i'm there for you to support you guys wherever whichever possible and thank you tespur university for doing this session it is a wonderful interacting with interacting with you and please excuse me because i have a lot of things to do so i have to run for my office right now and it was absolute pleasure talking to you all thank you thank you so much mosi thank you so much thank you thank you syamkanu mohanto da please uh, and we have to remember about the patient so we should not lose the patient and we have to be a strong at least till april thank you thank you uh, thank you very much uh, for your enlighten uh, enlightening us with a very strong and this uh, means uh, in a very a uh, positive vibes uh, have given to us thank you so next uh, we just uh, i just uh, want to uh, start with our last resource person the subra devi uh subra devi has completed her master's degree in food and nutrition from banasthali vidyapeeth rajasthan after working in, in the development sectors for 10 years She took plan to venture into the packaging, uh, packaged food industry, and she established Mera Food Industry in 2004. And Mera Food Industry is today a household name of Manipur. So I welcome you, ma'am. Uh, please continue with your speech. Subra ma'am are you there? Yeah I'm here. Yeah. Can you can start yeah ma'am. Yeah I'm I'm visible. Yeah you are audible. Yeah. Okay. Uh Good afternoon ma'am. Uh, Mosmi and uh, the Tejpur University for inviting me Good in this uh, very interesting uh, session. uh yeah uh, let me start with what i did uh, in past uh, 10 to 15 years with uh, women and uh, uh, where uh, my products are going and uh, how like uh, how we can uh, develop the entrepreneurship uh, skills and uh, among women okay yeah uh, as mosme has uh, shared that uh, i i started in uh, Uh, Banasthali Vidyapeeth, Rajasthan. Uh, that was in year 1990. I completed my master in food and nutrition. So uh, food is my forte. I was very confident. Uh, it's not the confidence I must say, but it was. I, I was very uh, like uh, like uh, I liked the uh, processing of food. That was one of my you know, like uh, interest area. But uh, the due to the demand in the job market. i worked in the various sector i served uh, as a college lecturer in one of the private college here then also i served as an announcer a radio announcer in all india radio in fall then later on i joined the uh, the ngo sector and when i was working with ngo i was more focusing on women empowerment and uh, how uh, this violence against women can be tackled and i was working with various uh, uh, organization who are working on this line and we also have developed lots of uh, like a very strong network among us uh, but one of the the main problem which we discovered during those period of my work was that the poverty the women are going, like suffering that poverty in a very serious degree very serious degree of poverty is there with the women uh and economic independence is not with them even though uh, the women of manipur are considered to be a very hard working women and uh, they are um, engaged in various sector and uh, they have done a tremendous job in the field of handloom handicraft uh, food even though uh, you can see that most of the women are most of the time in the kitchen 
they cooked, they prepare food for the family. But when we talk about food industry, we don't see my, many women coming up in this sector. So I, I thought I, I thought that I think I, I should begin some of uh, the journey with this. So uh, at the beginning, uh, even though uh, I don't have much of the resources with me, and uh, when you shared your ideas with the bank, the bank were also not uh, very uh, like keen in supporting me. So I said, okay, with whatever I have, let me start with. So I used my kitchen. So it's in creating a model for every woman that you can start a business from your home uh, with the space you have and whatever resources you have it. So it's not that only uh, when you have a very big project with you in your hand or you are tied, you have tied up with the banks or some organization and some organization supporting you only then you can uh, do the business. You can start with what you have. A bank will only support when they see that your business is growing. So that is one of the messages I would like to um, like uh, share with uh, whoever wants to start a business. So uh, you should try out uh, the ideas you have, but try in a very small level. So that even if you, if you fail, you, you can come up that very fast. If you are, you are failed with, uh, in a very huge way, then the, uh, that economically it, it will be very difficult to come up again. So uh, the setback will be very strong. So instead of that, I'll, I'll suggest that start a tryout in a very small way so that you can uh, try many more new ideas with. So it's not uh, the food. Uh, when I tried this Myra, uh, even though I, I would like to mention here that why I kept this name as a Myra. Myra is a symbol of women empowerment here. You must have heard about Myra Pibes. Myra is a uh, torch which women carries for the night vigil. When there is some social ill, all the women of this, uh, our locality, our society will come out and they uh, take uh, the charge of taking care of uh, solving those problems. So, it's this, it's a, we are in a time where women and uh, our society is going through a very severe poverty. Everybody is in search of job and they want to have a very, uh, like, uh, enough earning for their family to support a family and their family can live in a very uh, uh, respectable way. So uh, to meet the basic uh, need, women also have to earn. And uh, one of the key step of uh, women empowerment I consider is the economic independence. When women have their own earning, they can support themselves. They have a say in their family as well and in the society as well. They, get, uh, they achieve a respectable space in the society. And when the women are for every aspect depends on the male member of the society, and they have to listen to them. You know, like so. So this is one area where I consider that economic independence is must. And studies have sh also shown that when women earn, it's not that women are earning only for themselves. When women earn, their health improve. That the, uh, the health of the children improve. The nutrition of the family improve. The education get better, and they have a more broader way of. Uh, thinking in the society that how they can take part, uh, active participation in the development of society. So, so this is a, one of the area where I consider that women should earn. So, uh, but when women wants to start some journey or entrepreneur journey, they always uh, have this complaint that they don't have the access to uh, low own or to bank or access to government schemes and or vice versa. All, all, all this, um, uh, the complaints are there. I said, uh, look, just try out with what you have. You start from your home in a small way. So where you are comfortable with. So uh, for me, for myself, I was comfortable with the food processing. So I said, let me try out with this. So I see in the market there are thousands of products which is coming from uh, coming from outside and 
out of which I consider there are many products which can be made it so easily at your kitchen and the raw material is available in plenty. So I started trying out on the available fruits of the state because the in the market I see lots of product which is uh, coming from Myanmar all dried fruits and very easily processed at all processed at the home scale level and it is all preserved with the use of um, sugar salt or you know, like it's a, in a very easy way it's a like pickling thing and drying out the fruits so that was the easiest thing I could start with and I I saw that it has a very I mean, like it has a ready market you can easily market it you can start from your local market, your own uh, localities. And that can be replaced. The things which is coming from outside that can be replaced and you can have a very sustainable economy of the state. So when I started, of course, as I said earlier that I don't have, I didn't have anything with me. Uh, there was not no, no support at all. So uh, with a very few investment, uh, the money I have, uh, I purchased some of the uh, fruits from the local market, started processing on it, and very immediately I started selling on a very small packet, which everybody can buy. One rupee packet was my beginning. So a one rupee packet, uh, everybody can you know, purchase. You can just uh, sell it in the local market. It was so easy to sell. So the response was so uh, good that um, I didn't look back from there. I, st I started taking uh, participation in the uh, local exhibition as well as uh, uh, that uh, state level and uh, national level uh, exhibition. And response was coming very uh, like tremendously so uh, so well that um, uh, I also started thinking of not only marketing in the local uh, sorry in Man Manipur but uh, spreading it across India and also to uh, looking for even exporting my product. Of course, the product line, which uh, from the local fruits and vegetables, which we have and uh, the international market, uh, what kind of products they are looking for from us is always uh, uh, like the uh, demands are different and national markets are different demand. So based on that, we have to uh, develop the product. Uh, that's what we did it in la from last so many years we have been working with. And simultaneously, uh, when I started, uh, I didn't have much of skilled worker who can really work me, work with me and help me out. So uh, the, at the beginning, I started with the giving training. So whoever have, I've taken as my help um, to, to help out in my work, I give them training. And later on, they become a trainer to the new uh, like new recruits. So slowly, um, I started with three of them at the beginning. Now I have more than 60 plus women who are directly working with me. And there are numbers of self-help groups whom we have trained and we have outsourced our product. And uh, they're, they're also working with me. And uh, it's, it's more directly, we are getting giving benefit more to more than 200 of women. So it's uh, starting from the farming level till the final products, lots of women get involved in my uh, work. So where people are saying that why only women? Why not male? I said, yeah, see, male have lots of opportunity to uh, work. Uh, Whoever has come to me, they are either uh, less educated, school dropouts, who can continue their education because of the family pressure or a family economic condition or lesser, uh, like uh, less like the, those who don't have the uh, better opportunity in life so uh the, they are not skilled uh, and they have never get the opportunity to get a uh, certain education where they, they will be skilled and exposure level is is also very less to them so they are looking in a way they, they want to work in a very safe environment uh, so i said that when uh, we create this kind of environment where only women are working, their family also agree to send uh, their children to uh, my workplace. So this is a thing which I created. And I'm also um, asking other uh, group and other women to duplicate it and in a, their local area. So now uh, I, I, I say very proudly that when I registered myself as a food processor and with my unit as a food processing unit, in 2004, there was not much of the women 
uh, food processor who were um, like uh, doing processing and uh, selling in the market. Now, uh, in the recent uh, survey in, uh, in in this line, there are more than four thousand uh, registered women food processor, and startup is again uh, one of the, uh, the opportunity for them, and that. Uh, the um, Manipur government is really focusing on this uh, startups uh, the, in idea stays or in the revenue stays. In idea stays, so many of them have registered themselves and uh, in the, especially in the food, food processing sector. And uh, they are trying out new, new products to launch with. Uh, definitely, there are many who are just an imitation of what I have uh, started in the 2004 and which is still continuing. So uh, we are very much in the local market. Uh, most of my products are uh, sold out here itself. But now, because I said that there are so many other uh, smaller units are coming up uh, who are making very similar line of products, so I don't have to focus more on this local market now. You can see that uh, there are many products which is coming uh, from outside have been also stopped. It is more the local uh, food products are sold here. So uh, the availability of local processed foods are very much uh, here in the Manipur. Before that, there was not much. So it is an utilization of available fruits and vegetables. In developed country, whatever grown fruits and vegetables are there, 70 to 80% are processed in the processing unit. Whereas in India, it is only 10 to 30% been uh, processed in Manipur, there was not much, not even 10% was processed here. So there's an ample opportunity for us as a food processor that we should try out many more new products. And because we are in the agrarian uh, the society and most of our earnings are on agriculture sector and uh, whatever uh, it is grown here and agro uh, climatically also we are very suitable to grow uh, many exotic variety of fruits and vegetables. We can really think of for the, our future that we can start the farming of those uh, those products which which has a very good market outside of the country, and uh, in the process form, how, what kind of product we can sell it out. So uh, we see lots of opportunity. Uh, women and also our youth can take up in the near future uh, after COVID. Uh, in, in Manipur, uh, we have started a movement uh, through various educated youth who came together and started uh, forming society. And we are giving lots of uh, awareness program going from uh, place to place and uh, spreading the awareness program that uh, we should uh, make ourselves, our state as, uh, as a, a, a food, sustainable in food. So that at least we don't depend on the food from outside. And uh, uh, if we grow in surplus, we can think of the processing as well as earning uh, by selling those products outside of the country. One of the products which has really come up very well in the state is the pineapple. So uh, I'm also targeting the processed pineapple to export outside of the state. Uh, of course, uh, it has reached to various places, but uh, I'm also targeting to export it. Um, now, uh, after sending lots of samples and samplings uh, been done, uh, now I have a very uh, fixed order. As uh, Mr. Das from Natfi also mentioned that uh, I'm going to export my pineapple product in a cane form uh, to uh, some of the country outside. Uh, and. Uh, it's very soon it will be uh, going uh, shift by shift. And uh, uh, logistic is a, definitely a very big issue because we, we don't have any direct uh, connection of um, flight from here to different foreign countries. So either it has to send up to uh, Delhi or Mumbai or to the uh, nearest port, like in uh, either in the, to uh, uh, Calcutta or Mumbai port, then only have, we have to send it. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, that, that's the biggest challenge we have till that. Uh, but as uh, Mr. Uh, uh, SK uh, Mohanta also mentioned, that this is a, a temporary challenge. Once this is shot out, uh, we'll be able to do lots of uh, exporting of our product outside of the state. So uh, uh, during this COVID period, I didn't stop my business. I continued uh, making it 
of course um, at the very uh, beginning of the, it was in the later part of uh, the march till Mar till the end of march we couldn't do much of the business because most of the time it was pu public curfew very strong lockdown and lots of people were also very uh, fearful to coming out so uh, we couldn't do much in the month of march and even uh, uh, till april it was not uh, business was not much but those who were uh, living with me staying with me who could uh, work uh, 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 being residing there in the factory premises we we continue to work because uh, there was certain processing which takes time and uh, uh, once you stopped it will go waste even in, uh, lots of pineapple in my cold room was uh, went uh, like uh, lost it was all rotten so we had to throw it out as a it was a few tons of pineapple i had to just dumped uh, just uh, throw it away because it was all uh, rotten after uh, the uh, quite long uh, this thing um, uh, lockdown and even the packaging material which i was expecting to receive from outside of the state because of all this lockdown and uh, none of the vehicles was flying they couldn't bring it in time so i couldn't do it and that was one of the challenge i had but now uh, things have started moving uh, vehicles are coming in even my packaging materials are coming even the chemicals which i required for the preservations are coming in and uh, whatever i required it is uh, of course is coming but uh, yeah another challenge which i have is that the prices uh, which we fixed earlier is um, it has to change because the logistic cost is coming up like for example when i used to send my product from here from imphal to delhi per kg uh, the charges of this uh, this uh, freight was only 45 rupees now it has re it has come up to 65 rupees per kg so it, so it has definitely affect the the pricing of the product as well because the transportation cost extra and most of the packaging materials we don't we don't produce here it is coming from outside either from uh, guwahati from delhi from kanpur or from various other places it's coming in so uh, even that uh, the costing because of that uh, the uh, the costing has uh, really gone up that's a bigger challenge we have uh, another challenge we have this still the public vehicles are not flying so those workers who are coming to work with me who agree to work with me in a very strict environment uh, there uh, we, we have to uh, we had to, we have to arrange their pickup uh, facilities so we arranged a pickup van for them we are picking up from their home and we drop them back to their home and uh, in a very thin uh, thinner way we are breaking so but as the it it is a food and food is all uh, will always be in demand so uh, we have to continue the production and it's a seasonal also so uh, in the season of mango you have to save mango in the season of uh, uh, plum you have to save plum in the season of pineapple you have to process the pineapple you cannot uh, process pineapple when pineapple is not available so when the fruits is on time that we have to continue our uh, working as well so it was a closing down of my factory for time for some time was uh, not possible so we continued working with and uh, but we we had to arrange it we 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 have like we have to arrange in a very alternative ways that so that everybody uh, get the uh, like a safer environment and they also feel very safe to come to work with us and uh, and uh, market uh, we we also have to search a market so that uh, we don't uh, go out of uh, like out of cash uh, even though uh, prime minister have extended the support that uh, to the msme sector uh, the covid support uh, fund is also released uh, so uh, we, we are expecting the bank also support uh, in a more, more uh, like uh, prompt way so that uh, the our immediate requirement can be met with uh, especially when uh, when you have a very good uh, rapport with your bankers definitely banks are there so uh, uh, i'm also going through all this thing and uh, when you are uh, in the this kind of business uh, you have to uh, like uh, really tackle those uh, each and every issue one by one and uh, uh, very unseen uh, uh, problems also come up you have to get uh, ready with that because because this is 
uh, it's, a, it's a tough time for us and uh, we all have to uh, like uh, tackle this problem uh, unitedly and uh, we begin hope for the better future that definitely uh, things will improve change and will come up with the better uh, ideas uh, I think uh, instead of sharing what I have done, uh, this is some of my product uh, which uh, we are making in. Uh, I think it is uh, visible. Uh, this is my, this is large cane, which is uh, this is for the export purpose. And there are many products which we are making in. Uh, I have started sending some of my products to uh, UK in a very small consignment. Uh, uh, apart from the food processing, I'm also trying out some of my hand, uh, handicraft and handloom. Uh, Manipur, uh, as you know, we, we are very rich in hand and handicraft sector. Uh, but uh, we, uh, uh, most of our products are for the local consumption. So, so I thought that instead of just look, like marketing our product in local, because there, the your revenue will be very small. So uh, we are targeting to export some of the uh, like some of our products to. Uh, other country. We recently we have tried to Netherlands. It has reached, and we are waiting for the response. That how um, the, the their public or their uh, consumers are responding on the, our product, and we are hoping that in the near future we'll definitely do more and more export of uh, the local product, which will definitely benefit our people, our artisans, and also our um, our economy will definitely improve. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll invite more of the question. Then I continue just uh, sharing for longer period. I, I love to answer what uh, our viewers are really looking for. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am, for your completely practical, in a manner, how women struggles and ultimately be a means a success in your in your life or uh, in your entrepreneurship. So I just request all of your, all of the participants to ask question. Bam. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, uh, very uh, mesmerizing talk. Actually, you have done many work. Actually, uh, so uh, we should appreciate a woman like you. Uh, in Assam also, we have very uh, uh, small, uh, uh, we have very, uh, uh, we have many women who produce very small amount of uh, this uh, processed food. But uh, in our uh, local market, uh, this uh, processed food has less demand. And uh, so is there any way out that we can unite all those uh, small units and export to other states? Yeah, there's a possibility uh, that uh, we create a common brand for the state and see that what the outside of the state are looking from the Northeast. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what they are expecting, for example, uh, one of my pickles, which is on very high demand, is Bhut Jalukya pickle. Yes, you also yes. have Assam also has uh, this good yeah. okay? and Manipur also has we, we call it Umoro. Nagaland call it king chili. So every state has it's a very similar, uh, a very hot chili. Uh, it is in very high demand. So you can create certain product uh, collectively, uh, which other people from outside of the state is looking for. It can be like uh, you, you can create even the, the sauce of the pickle, uh, sorry, sauce of the chili or uh, like uh, so, so some other product, which uh, like the raw material will be from your side, but the final product will definitely be consumed, uh, will be liked by other uh, like people from outside. And you can see on the rec, as I, uh, as Mr. SK Manta also said that in the Google, when you Google it, you see that what kind of food products are available in the, available in the market and what uh, what range of products are available and what are the products which we can, our uh, people from our state can make it. So we can focus on, like we can focus on certain product which can be easily made it here and on the common brand, which, which will definitely promote the, the Assam. 
uh, and can set the, they, they can sell it out. So the same thing I'm also trying in the, in the Manipur. When I started in 2004, Amla, Amla, as you know, that it's the richest source of vitamin C. It is very healthy food. And Amla was available in plenty. And only product which was uh, available in the market of Amla was this, just dry Amla, just salted dry Amla. And there were some uh, some brand of those product of Amla was also, were also coming from outside, but now it's completely stopped. It's only on our local Amla uh, dried form is sold here. Uh, but availability of Amla uh, for local consumptions, uh, it's more than what we can consume, our people can consume. So it isn't plenty. I must say it's in plenty of amount which is available. The AMLA is available. So because AMLA is in high demand or outside of the state, so we are we are developing certain AMLA product so that we can sell that outside of the state. Uh, recently, uh, we, we also served, we also realized that the price factor is one of the issue. Uh, when you see the AMLA products, from other state uh, are selling at a very cheaper rate, whereas our uh, our products are a little higher on site. But we also have to negotiate with uh, saying that this is more natural, this is more uh, uh, organic than the amla, which is processed in other side of the country, and so it are. So, so th there are certain things which uh, we can really think of working together. But skilling is very important when you have to produce in huge. When you have to come to the market, you have to have a set of people who are skilled. So it's a skilling is very important here. So uh, you have to give a training continuously so that more and more people can make the same kind of product so that it can come to the common brand and uh, the whole product can come in the one place and you can pack it and sell it in the common brand. So that is one possibility which I see and I was trying out that way because my three unit is not enough to supply whole India and it is in a smaller way. So if I have to supply one of my product to all over the India, then I have to make join thousands of women to work with me. So that is one possibility. I see that the smaller unit, unit can come together and create certain brand, create some product which can be sellable. Like legit papa is a very good example that every woman yes. And the same recipe, making papar at their home and uh, uh, bringing back to one common place and packing it and selling to all over the world. Legit papar is a very good example. So like that, the Assam can also create certain product like that, which can be sell, uh, which is sellable outside. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anyone? Any other questions? Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I have set the uh, set box, box also. But I have only find some appreciation to ma'am. Uh, more of a question than the question. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very I'm much. From I mean, like I, uh, just thank you for the informative session. It's so inspiring mm -hmm. to hear to women entrepreneurs as you ma'am, more power to you. So I think uh, most of the participants are feeling powerful at thinking of doing something uh, as you are doing. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you have given because you have to leave your factory and to sit in the office and say to me, thank you very much. Your spare of time. Yeah. Motivating women is also very important so that yeah, all the women obviously. can come together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. So I just want uh, like to wind up our session. I thank uh, Dr. Uh, sir, sorry, Manus Kumar Das. Sir, for giving their inputs, valuable inputs in the session. Uh, I thank all the Tespur University technical support system administrators. Uh, I also thank all the participants 
uh, who have actively participated and they are continuously supporting us through their participation in all our webinars. So thank you very much. Uh, we are very much uh, means lucky to get you uh, in our uh, online modes of uh, seminars. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>